Lesson 3 The Power of the Exalted Jesus Sabbath Afternoon July 8 The Savior longs to give us a greater blessing than we ask, and He delays the answer to our request that He may show us the evil of our own hearts and our deep need of His grace. He desires us to renounce the selfishness that leads us to seek Him. Confessing our helplessness and bitter need, we are to trust ourselves wholly to His love. Not because we see or feel that God hears us are we to believe. We are to trust in His promises. When we come to Him in faith, every petition enters the heart of God. When we have asked for His blessing, we should believe that we receive it and thank Him that we have received it. Then we are to go about our duties, assured that the blessing will be realized when we need it most. When we have learned to do this, we shall know that our prayers are answered. God will do for us exceedingly abundantly according to the riches of His glory and the working of His mighty power. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 and 16 and chapter 1 verse 19. The Desire of Ages, page 200. All created beings live by the will and power of God. They are recipients of the life of the Son of God. However able and talented, however large their capacities, they are replenished with life from the source of all life. He is the spring, the fountain of life. Only he who alone hath immortality, dwelling in light and life, could say, I have power to lay down my life, and I have power to take it again. All who are one with Christ through faith in Him gain an experience which is life unto eternal life. Because I live, ye shall live also. Christ became one with humanity, that humanity might become one in spirit and life with Him. By virtue of this union in obedience to the Word of God, His life becomes their life. My Life Today, page 295 the power of godliness has almost ceased to be in our churches. And why is this? The Lord is still waiting to be gracious. He has not closed the windows of heaven. We have separated ourselves from Him. We need to fix the eye of faith upon the cross and believe that Jesus is our strength, our salvation. It is faith that is lacking. God has an abundance of grace and power awaiting our demand. But the reason we do not feel our great need of it is because we look to ourselves and not to Jesus. We do not exalt Jesus and rely wholly upon His merits. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 166 and 167. Sunday, July 9. Praying and thanksgiving. Have we not reason to talk of God's goodness and to tell of His power? When friends are kind to us, we esteem it a privilege to thank them for their kindness. How much more should we count it a joy to return thanks to the friend who has given us every good and perfect gift? Then let us in every church cultivate thanksgiving to God. Let us educate our lips to praise God in the family circle. Let our gifts and offerings declare our gratitude for the favors we daily receive. In everything we should show forth the joy of the Lord and make known the message of God's saving grace. The hearts of those who reveal the attributes of Christ glow with divine love. They are imbued with the spirit of gratitude. Lift up Jesus. Lift Him up the man of Calvary, with the voice of song and prayer. My Life Today, page 170 In the work of heart-keeping, we must be instant in prayer, unwearied in petitioning the throne of grace for assistance. Those who take the name of Christian should come to God in earnestness and humility, pleading for help. 
The Savior has told us to pray without ceasing. The Christian cannot always be in the position of prayer, but his thoughts and desires can always be upward. Our self-confidence would vanish did we talk less and pray more. The affection should center upon God. Contemplate His greatness, His mercy, and excellences. Let His goodness and love and perfection of character captivate your heart. Converse upon His divine charms and the heavenly mansions He is preparing for the faithful. He whose conversation is in heaven is the most profitable Christian to all around Him. His words are useful and refreshing. They have a transforming power upon those who hear them and will melt and subdue the soul. Ellen G. White comments in the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 3, page 1157. To praise God in fullness and sincerity of heart is as much a duty as is prayer. We are to show to the world and to all the heavenly intelligences that we appreciate the wonderful love of God for fallen humanity and that we are expecting larger and yet larger blessings from His infinite fullness. Far more than we do, we need to speak of the precious chapters in our experience. After a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit, our joy in the Lord and our efficiency in His service would be greatly increased by recounting His goodness and His wonderful works in behalf of His children. These exercises drive back the power of Satan. They expel the spirit of murmuring and complaint, and the tempter loses ground. They cultivate those attributes of character which will fit the dwellers on earth for the heavenly mansions. Such a testimony will have an influence upon others. No more effective means can be employed for winning souls to Christ. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 299 and 300. Monday, July 10. Experiencing Insight from the Holy Spirit. Here are revealed the heights of attainment that we may reach through faith in the promises of our Heavenly Father when we fulfill His requirements. Through the merits of Christ, we have access to the throne of infinite power. He that spared not His own Son but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Romans chapter 8 verse 32 it is the mystery of God in the flesh, God in Christ, divinity in humanity. Christ bowed down in unparalleled humility that in His exaltation to the throne of God, He might also exalt those who believe in Him to a seat with Him upon His throne. Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, will be given unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17, that we may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Our High Calling, page 366. What we need is to know God and the power of His love as revealed in Christ by an experimental knowledge. We must search the Scriptures diligently, prayerfully. Our understanding must be quickened by the Holy Spirit and our hearts must be uplifted to God in faith and hope and continual praise. Through the merits of Christ, through His righteousness, which by faith is imputed unto us, we are to attain to the perfection of Christian character. Our daily and hourly work is set forth in the words of the Apostle, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. While doing this, our minds become clearer and our faith stronger and our hope is confirmed. We are so engrossed with the view of His purity and loveliness and the sacrifice He has made to bring us into agreement with God that we have no disposition to speak of doubts and discouragements. 
the manifestation of God's love, His mercy, and His goodness, and the work of the Holy Spirit upon the heart to enlighten and renew it, place us, through faith, in so close connection with Christ that, having a clear conception of His character, we are able to discern the masterly deceptions of Satan. Looking unto Jesus and trusting in His merits, we appropriate the blessings of light, of peace, of joy in the Holy Ghost. And in view of the great things which Christ has done for us, we are ready to exclaim, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, pages 743 and 744. Tuesday, July 11 Participating in Resurrection Power The Savior came forth from the grave by the life that was in Himself. Now was proved the truth of His words, I lay down my life that I might take it again. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Now was fulfilled the prophecy He had spoken to the priests and rulers, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. John chapter 10 verses 17 and 18 and chapter 2 verse 19. Over the rent sepulcher of Joseph, Christ had proclaimed in triumph, I am the resurrection and the life. These words could be spoken only by the deity. All created beings live by the will and power of God. They are dependent recipients of the life of God. From the highest seraph to the humblest animate being, all are replenished from the source of life. Only he who is one with God could say, I have power to lay down my life, and I have power to take it again. In his divinity, Christ possessed the power to break the bonds of death. The Desire of Ages, page 785. Go to Christ for relief. Cling to him. Stay long enough to yield up your will to the will of God. Many are in too great a hurry to pray. With hurried steps they pass through the shadow of Christ's loving presence, pausing perhaps for a few moments within the sacred precincts, but not waiting for counsel. They have no time to sit down, no time to remain with the divine teacher. With their burdens, they return to their work. Fix your thoughts upon the Savior. Go apart from the bustle of the world and sit down under Christ's shadow. This you must do if you receive the rich blessings He is waiting to bestow on you. Give your thoughts to high and holy things. Then, amidst the din of the daily toil and conflict, your spiritual strength will be renewed. This Day with God, page 154. There is no man living that has any power or ability which he has not received from God, and the source from whence it came is open to the weakest human being. If he will draw near to God, the unfailing source of strength, he will realize that God fulfills his promise, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. The Holy Spirit waits to give aid to every believing soul, and Jesus declares, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Let those who believe in Jesus be strong, prayerful, and full of trust in Christ's power to save. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, pages 379 and 380. Wednesday, July 12. Christ above all powers. The head of every man is Christ. God who put all things under the Savior's feet gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 and Ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23. The church is built upon Christ as its foundation. It is to obey Christ as its head. It is not to depend upon man 
or be controlled by man. Many claim that a position of trust in the church gives them authority to dictate what other men shall believe and what they shall do. This claim, God does not sanction. The Desire of Ages, page 414. The early Christians were often called to meet the powers of darkness face to face. By sophistry and by persecution, the enemy endeavored to turn them from the true faith. At the present time, when the end of all things earthly is rapidly approaching, Satan is putting forth desperate efforts to ensnare the world. He is devising many plans to occupy minds and to divert attention from the truths essential to salvation. In every city, his agencies are busily organizing into parties those who are opposed to the law of God. The arch deceiver is at work to introduce elements of confusion and rebellion, and men are being fired with a zeal that is not according to knowledge. Wickedness is reaching a height never before attained, and yet many ministers of the gospel are crying, peace and safety. But God's faithful messengers are to go steadily forward with their work. Clothed with the panoply of heaven, they are to advance fearlessly and victoriously, never ceasing their warfare until every soul within their reach shall have received the message of truth for this time. The Acts of the Apostles, pages 219 and 220. In the hour of utmost extremity, David, instead of permitting his mind to dwell upon circumstances, looked earnestly to God for help. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He reviewed his past eventful life. Wherein had the Lord ever forsaken him? His soul was refreshed in recalling the many evidences of God's favor. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 56 verse 3 was the language of his heart. Though he himself could not discern a way out of the difficulty, God could see it and would teach him what to do. All earthly powers are under the control of the Infinite One. To the mightiest ruler, to the most cruel oppressor, he says, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. Job chapter 38, verse 11. God's power is constantly exercised to counteract the agencies of evil. He is ever at work among men, not for their destruction, but for their correction and preservation. Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 692 and 694. Thursday, July 13. Jesus, all things, and his church. We expect too little and we receive according to our faith. We are not to cling to our own ways, our own plans, our own ideas. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Besetting sins are to be conquered, and evil habits overcome. Wrong dispositions and feelings are to be rooted out, and holy tempers and emotions begotten in us by the Spirit of God. Then let us lay hold of this mighty power by living faith, praying and believing, trusting and working. Then God will do that which only God can do. Hand yourself over to Jesus, to be molded and fashioned by him, that you may be made vessels unto honor. Your temptations, your ideas, your feelings must all be laid at the foot of the cross. Then the soul is ready to listen to words of divine instruction. Jesus will give you to drink of the water which flows from the river of God. Under the softening and subduing influence of his spirit, your coldness and listlessness will disappear. Christ will be in you a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The Upward Look, page 218. The prayer of faith is the great strength of the Christian and will assuredly prevail against Satan. This is why he insinuates that we have no need of prayer. The name of Jesus, our advocate, he detests. And when we earnestly come to him for help, Satan's hosts is alarmed.
It serves his purpose well if we neglect the exercise of prayer, for then his lying wonders are more readily received. That which he failed to accomplish in tempting Christ, he accomplishes by setting his deceitful temptations before man. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 296. Prayer is the breath of the soul. It is the secret of spiritual power. No other means of grace can be substituted and the health of the soul be preserved. Prayer brings the heart into immediate contact with the wellspring of life and strengthens the sinew and muscle of the religious experience. Neglect the exercise of prayer or engage in prayer spasmodically, now and then, as seems convenient, and you lose your hold on God. The spiritual faculties lose their vitality. The religious experience lacks health and vigor. It is only at the altar of God that we can kindle our tapers with divine fire. It is only the divine light that will reveal the littleness, the incompetence of human ability and give clear views of the perfection and purity of Christ. It is only as we behold Jesus that we desire to be like him, only as we view his righteousness that we hunger and thirst to possess it. And it is only as we ask in earnest prayer that God will grant us our heart's desire. Gospel Workers, pages 254 and 255. For further reading, My Life Today, Thanksgiving and Praise, page 171, and That I May Know Him on the Threshold of Eternity, page 362.